Hop in. Thank you. 
fire. Oh, fire. You. It ruined my face. The fire. I can still feel it in my wounds. They'll kill me. They'll come back with their brands and it will burn. I wouldn't talk, so they burned me. Again. And again. And again. Their eyes, they, they enjoyed it. Before they come back, I'm begging you. Let me out. They always come back. And it always burns. Thank <laughs> you. 
I knew Johansson would lure the servants of Satan, but I set this guy for the Archfiend himself! Where is Lacroix? He is under divine protection. If you want him, come take him if you can!
I knew your hunt! He is...
I told you everything. There's no reason for you to keep me here. Let me go! I am an archaeologist. You can't hold me here like this. I am a hostage. I do not need protection. Bring me back to my hotel at once. Yeah, yeah, okay, anything. Just get me out of these caverns and away from these crazies. I think I'm starting to get pneumonia. <coughs> the sarcophagus? You went through all that trouble for the sarcophagus? Yeah, I'll tell you. 
But don't you think it would be better to get out of here before those men come back? I guess if you can get all the way here, you deserve the answers. But can I make one request first? After I answer your questions, you help me escape. All right. Where should I begin? Let's start with the history of the Ankaran sarcophagus. That is a long and interesting legend, lost and found throughout the ages. Tell me, are you familiar with the Assyrians? Well, the Assyrians lived in Mesopotamia, a region between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Most of this territory is now modern-day Iraq, Iran, Turkey, and Syria. They were warmongers, conquerors, a people driven to expand by their kings. Even before the Romans, they migrated their conquered people to the territories to stem revolt. But I... Uh, I'm afraid I'm getting off the subject. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, the markings on the sarcophagus seem to hint that it is from some time between 1050 and 800 BC, which was a period of fierce expansion by the Assyrians. Oddly, for those years, only one king shows up on the historical record. While most likely he wiped all evidence of his predecessor's existence or passed the name to his heirs, one monarch, Mesarach, the one-eyed king is given credit for the territory and achievements of this time. But he would have had to have been over 250 years old, like a Dracula or something. I find it hard to believe a sarcophagus with a person as important as Maserach could remain in, oh, what is the word, pristine or intact condition for so many years. But this is who is believed to be contained within. Men educated, guess. Maybe you have not heard. It was stolen from the museum before we had a chance to open it. Usually we use equipment to carbon date, x-ray, and take air samples before we pry open the lid. You know, it is interesting that you ask me that. The goddess on the outside of the sarcophagus was Lamastu. In Assyrian myth, Lamastu was an evil demoness who preyed on humans. Many people cite her as the mother of vampire myth, and... The engravings on and found around the sarcophagus portray a regal figure drinking the blood of his enemies. Now, this image is found in many cultures, specifically among those of royal lineage. But there is a quite scientific explanation. A disorder known as porphyria. In short, it is caused by a deficiency of the iron in the blood, and in many cultures, for the nobility that could conceivably get away with the cure, the treatment was to drink human blood. Perhaps... Drinking the blood of your enemies is, if nothing else, symbolic. It can inspire fear in your foes and dissidents. Don't misunderstand me. I in no way believe it was a vampire. Vampires. That's what caused this whole mess. These maniacs believe they exist. Uh, that is... you see... In archaeology, one can spend years looking for a dig site, following local rumors, studying old maps. It's a complicated process, very boring. Finding and organizing a dig is the least interesting part of an archaeologist's job. Trust me, you don't want to hear about it. That I can't be sure of, nor can anyone. But I promise you it is more likely to be filled with, uh, gummy bears than vampires. 
perhaps maybe a mummy, but not likely the kind to go about chasing Abbott and Costello. Not much, really. I'm an archaeologist, not a mythologist. But I do know that Lamastu, the Assyrian demoness, was thought to have been the inspiration for Lilith, the first wife of Adam in the Jewish Old Testament, another source of the vampire myth. Ah, quite interesting. There is a surprisingly complex mechanical lock on the face of the sarcophagus. By sheer luck, we were able to find the key not far from the sarcophagus. Why no one ever found it and robbed it, it's perplexing. How strange, you would ask. I haven't seen the key since it was loaded onto the Elizabeth Dane in Turkey. It was stolen before the sarcophagus even. I am still hopeful that the police find both pieces before the contents can be disturbed. No, it's not the kind of key you can copy at the hardware store. It's actually very sophisticated, and I meant to study it at the museum. I've answered all your questions. Do you think now you could please get me out of here? I don't care who you are or why you've had so many questions about the sarcophagus. I just want to leave this place. Thank you, my friend. I don't know where you came from, but I will never forget this kindness. <laughs>
With whom do they think they're dealing? Attack me in my own building! They're desperate. <laughs> They've shown their weakness. A last-ditch attempt to steal the prize. The Sabat. A pack of shovelheads with cheap pistols was all they could muster. Two got a few stories up, but I took care of them. And my sheriff brought the rest their final death in the lobby. Sabat animals. Why else? The motive of every kindred in the entire city these last few nights. The Ankaran sarcophagus. They've been misled into thinking the sarcophagus holds a sleeping ancient. Their most coveted feasts. Diablerists. The Sabbat's infamy is in no small part due to their practice of diablerie, that is, drinking the blood of other kindred, especially older ones, until they are dead. Diablerists gain the power of those they've fed upon. And the Camarilla, this is an act punishable by death. For the moment, we've manipulated the press into reporting tonight's events as a terrorist attack. Their soldiers may be no danger to me, but their threat to the masquerade is abundant. As my best agent... I'm sure you can guess my course of action. The Sabbat have made their haven at the Hallibrook Hotel, right under our noses here in downtown. Kill their leader. The rest will scamper out of the city. This is the last time they ever set foot in Los Angeles. Before you go... Beckett told me you went to the Society of Leopold. Did you find out how my sarcophagus is opened? What? What did you find out? A key? Where? Do you have it? <laughs> Not only did you infiltrate the Society of Leopold, but you managed to kill their greatest hunter. You certainly are developing a legend for yourself. Superb. A toast to you. And to victory over the Sabbat. And to Bach. May all his progeny meet such fates. The Sabbat must be wiped out before dawn. Then, when you come back, we'll begin the hunt for the key. You can always count on the Sabbat to do the wrong thing for the right reasons. They're reckless, but they don't normally try to attract this much attention. This carelessness warrants observation. I hope it doesn't become pandemic. The Sabbat's goal is to stop Gehenna, which is very similar to my own, though they choose to do so through more violent, fanatic, and flamboyant methods. The Camarilla, on the other hand, suspends belief entirely. Or so goes the party line. What I am is kindred. How others choose to categorize themselves concerns me only where local customs are concerned. Individualism is a path fraught with obstacles and sometimes angry mobs. But for all its hardships, it is the only one worth taking. Well, perhaps for this pack, it's for the best. What did Johansson have to say? The lock and key. An invention as ancient as greed, I should have guessed. All we have to do is find a victor in this nonsense. They'll be the one with the key. A Syrian origin. Glad to see I'm not losing my touch. As for Meserach, I'll have to research that name, see what I can find. Lamastu? She was a Lilith figure. They represent empowered women and the threat of such women to male-dominated society. Strange she would be engraved on a king's tomb. It seems to corroborate my own evidence. I'm going to have to study it a little more. Maybe dig up some information on Meserach and the Lamastu myth. I'm certain the key will show up in time. 
Your information is appreciated. Excellent. Well, if we open it up and the world ends, then yes. If we open it up and the world does not end, then no. I'd wager the latter. How any sane kindred could think these poor unfortunates are an immediate threat to us is absurd. Most were afraid, or at the very least uneasy, around me. Tragic. Their desperation could very well hold the spark of revolution, however. <laughs> <laughs> 